ladies and gentlemen, I'm James Bowen, better known as the Rooster, here live for FreightWaysBackToTruckUp.com. I have Matt McClellan from Covenant Transport here to talk to you today about uh, their automation program they have with Aurora, their truck electrification program that Dooner and Dude had a chance to go out and test drive the other day, and also uh, any future plans Covenant may have with the opening of the supply chain. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? Doing great. Getting a little bit of rain down here finally in South Georgia. You know, uh, farmers down here planting like crazy while they have the moisture. And those that had already planted, we now have like three foot tall corn. And <laughs> everybody's glad to see that, you know, with the way the markets and all on that in the agricultural sector. You know, hey, you, you said your name so quick. I thought you said James Bond, and I was like, James I Bond. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. <laughs> I, would, I thought I was talking to somebody famous there for a minute. Well, maybe I am talking to somebody famous, but for different reasons. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple of weeks back, Dooner and the Dude had opportunity to go out to the, the headquarters down there to test drive one of your electric trucks. And a uh, great partnership you have. Uh, uh, there's any more details you can give about it? You know, you're kind of been uh, holding back on who the partner is, but I don't know if you can uh, give us that information yet or not. Also, uh, any more testing going on in that program? Yeah, well, let me correct you one thing. We didn't let Dooner drive that truck. We wouldn't get him. We wouldn't hand him the keys. Oh, <laughs> he got to ride in the passenger seat. <laughs> he tried to talk his way in there, even around the parking lot. We're like, sorry, man. We, we got to make you, we got to make sure we keep you alive for the next podcast. <laughs> um, but you're right. So we did, let me, James, let me tell you a little bit about that program. So, you know, first of all, you know, Covenant, like a lot of these, like, like a lot of fleets, we're long haul over the road guys and electrification with you know any truck that only goes 250 miles on a charge or, or regardless of how you're powering it, it's just not really what we do. Now we do have a handful of customers where that, that, that length of haul is perfect. And um, that was our motivation for getting into the electrification space. Cause we think these batteries over time are gonna get bigger and better. Um, but, you know, we decided to do this deal with Nikola. Um, we're also involved with um, Daimler and their electric vehicle council. So we're staying on top of this because, you know, one day the range is gonna get better. Um, but right now only about four, maybe 5% of our work falls into that category of of a length of haul where a battery electric truck is going to work. And, you know, James, battery electric for us is kind of a bridge to the next thing. We really think hydrogen is going to be the answer. And I know that wasn't your question, but, you know, we think that's really because you're going to be able to get seven, 800 miles out of a hydrogen yeah. truck. And so, you know, this electrification project is going to allow us to build some expertise, get used to the technology, get our engineers and our technicians involved with, you know, high voltage electricity and, you know, what this new cab over design is going to be like. Um, I'll say one other thing and then I'll kind of, I'll kind of let you direct me down the path you want to go to. We did this deal with Nikola, uh, a non-committal pre-order, like a lot of people did, because in order for us to invest in a truck that costs $350,000, we got to have customers that we know are going to be using it. So yeah. we just can't go out and buy these things and sit on them without, you know, really knowing how they're going to be used for, for, for a significant chunk of time. Uh, we did get this truck, the one that Duder and the Dude drove in. Um, it's a 90 day trial for a customer that we have down in Atlanta. Um, it's been in operation for almost three, almost four weeks now. It's doing great. There's been no downtime. Um, the, the efficiency of the truck has been better than we expected. The driver, it took him a couple of days to get used to it because he kept getting heavy on the pedal because he was so used to, he was just enjoying that port. And he has come back to us routinely, James, and said, you know what? My fatigue is lower at the end of the day. I enjoy driving it. Of course, he also enjoys people looking at him and taking pictures while he's driving down, you know, I-85 and I-75 and I-85 on his daily routes. Um, because that thing looks like something straight out of a you know Transformers movie. Yeah, they are awesome trucks, and basically, in my opinion, for a tweener run, uh, like a, a 250, 300 mile run, and especially like local work, you know, working around a around a big city like Chattanooga or around Atlanta, something like that, I let the truck I could see working. And 
the way you were talking about earlier about hydrogen, now I'm following Cummins with their electrolysis program, their fuel power plant program. They, they've got a hydrogen-based powertrain almost stood up, ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, they just did that deal with Daimler. They're going to put one in yeah. the Daimler truck, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, Cummins is setting up themselves from fuel production all the way through fuel use. So that's a, that's another project that I, I got a feeling a lot of companies are going to go after here. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're really hoping for that. And, and, and you know, we can talk about that a little bit later because I know you want to kind of yeah. pick my brain on the electric stuff. But, you know, electric is uh, for us. I'm not saying it's true for everybody. Um, electric is a bridge to something bigger. Um, we feel like there is a place for electric and it's, it's not necessarily just inside of our customer base. You know, a lot of our good friends and competitors like NFI, you know, they've got, you know, 20 of those things are about to get 20 more. They're doing a lot of drayage work. It's perfect for drayage, right? We're making yeah. those short runs and got all those crazy California regulations that, um, you know, require you to, not to not idle in the ports and, you know, electric truck is perfect for that. So there's a there's definitely a use case for it. Um, I, I saw on freight waves the other day, James. Um, you know, Cisco's putting 800 of these yeah, things Cisco's in play. Got a big commitment. That's a big deal. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, they're buying up every one that Daimler can turn out. I, I they they're going to have their names. They're going to have a lot of a uh, lot of decals on their uh, on their uh, going through that assembly line for a while that says Cisco. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's actually shocked me. You know, you I'm, going out, I'm, I'm going out to Portland next month where I'm on uh, Daimler's electric vehicle council, which means we kind of get privy access to kind of what's coming down the pipe. And they're going to take us for a tour of that new manufacturing facility. And I can't wait to see that. To your point, James, I think we're going to see Cisco slapped on the side of a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> while we're down there. But that's OK, man. And I, those guys at Cisco, they do. I mean, kudos to them for making that commitment and spending that money and, you know, doing that. You know, I'm all about decarbonization of freight when it makes sense. And yeah. they're certainly doing that. Yeah. Uh, next topic up, uh, you start a little partnership with Aurora for some autonomous driving, you know, and being a driver for 15 years, you know, you see a, a threat to your, uh, your job show up like autonomy. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the details on that and how uh, Covenant's positioning themselves for the yeah. autonomous driving space? And, you know, I promise, James, it's not going to sound like I got a list of talking points because but but I do. I get the question a lot. And it's not just me. It's our buddies across town at U.S. Express. They're doing a lot of really cool work with this autonomous program. Uh, you know, Werner, Schneider, you know, all of them. You know, we yeah. all are kind of getting involved on some level. And to, to your point. We are doing a partnership with Aurora. We're also doing one with Torque, which is the company that is um, owned 75% of by Daimler. But um, we decided to partner with those two. We looked at all of them. We picked those two. But to answer your question, you know, what we tell people is if you are a driver with, if you are a 21 year old driver of Covenant today, or maybe about to be 18 year old, you know, since they changed that law. <laughs> if you're an 18 year old, let's just use that driver of Covenant today, and you want to retire from Covenant at age, 60, 65, whatever it is, you can do that as a driver. Autonomous, and, and, I, and if I could see you, if I could look you in the eye, I would look at you in the eye and say, you can retire as a driver because there is no threat to your job from an autonomous truck. Now, it's easy for you to probably be a little skeptical of that, right? And I can kind of see from your expression, because we're doing this over video, that you're like, yeah, you've yeah, heard that before. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, there's so much freight and and this autonomous stuff makes sense for expedited runs, you know, that are long haul cross country. You know, I don't think we're going to really see autonomous stuff doing short haul runs and things like that. Those are going to be reserved for, you know, the drivers. But, you know, what I like to say about a truck, you know, James, is that, you know, it's like that old expression, you know, a ship was made or a ship is safest in the harbor, but that's not what it was made for, you know. A, a truck, a diesel truck was made to start that engine and to run all the time. So the unit economics of that truck, you know, the more you can keep that thing on the road, the more money it's going to make. And we can get to this in a minute, but the more efficient it's going to be as well. And so if we can deploy some, po some portion of our fleet, say it's 5%, 10%, we don't really know yet, right? I don't think anybody does for sure. 
autonomously for that that stuff that we have that goes cross country that's long haul we can slow that truck down to about 63 miles an hour because we got all night long and all day long to get it to where it's gone and kind of achieve that economy that comes with that perfect mpg doesn't matter if the speed limit is 70 or if you're up in wyoming and it's 80 that slower speed and the benefits that we get from that and that truck running for a thousand miles or however big that gas tank is is going to allow us to go as long as possible that's what this is all about. Um, you know, I can tell you about it being safer and I can tell you about it. You know, there's a lot of other areas that we could go into, but really it's that expedited long haul that really attracted us to the whole thing in the first place. And I feel like before I stop talking, I just got to say this one more time. If you are a driver with Covenant today, you can retire as a driver because your job is not going to be replaced. Our goal is to put these guys and girls and drivers into roles where they can be closer to home. If you like that on the road lifestyle, you know, we got plenty of routes for you to do that as well. Um, but, but, you know, the limited use case for these things for the, you know, in the first 10 years, in my opinion, is going to be limited to cross country expedited routes. Since you had to bring up the speed limit, let me throw an extra question in here on you. The, uh, the speed limit reg, uh, regulation that's cu currently going through the comment period, uh, FMCSA is trying to set a standardized speed limit for all heavy and large trucks. Uh, what would your, I don't know if you can speak for Covenant on this, what would your opinion be if all trucks were governed down to 63 across the board, company, oh. owner, operator, everybody? I mean, well, first of all, you got to have a conversation with your shippers if it's going to slow it down. <laughs> you're, all of a sudden, you're going to have longer lead times. But, you know, the good news is, is that I guess that would be true for everybody. It wouldn't be unique to Covenant. Um, you know, I, you know, it, it's a good question. I think that um, you're probably going to make a lot of, you know, consumer, a lot of uh, mom and dads driving the minivan on the interstate to the beach in the summertime, you're gonna make them upset because you got a bunch of trucks going significantly slower than the rest of traffic, assuming that, you know, the average speed limit is 70 miles an hour. I think that you're gonna get a lot more efficiency out of these trucks. Your fuel economy is gonna go up a little bit because um, that's the whole idea, right? Is, you know, is, is well, I mean, that's the argument I think that they're really using. Um, and um, yeah, so I think probably it's a good thing. I think it's gonna cause some congestion. I think some guys are gonna get speeding tickets that's it's going to be unless you limit the truck right you make it so you can't go you know over say 65 or 70 but um i'd probably be a fan of not making it the law um you know you can keep tabs on people with the telematics products in the trucks and you know you can run reports and find out who's being bad and who's being good and that sort of thing jeez they've been, they've been doing that 15 years almost ever since qualcomm got put in a truck yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I, I think that, I think, you know, I'm an environmental guy. I think there's probably some good benefits that come out of it, but I don't think you should make it required. That's my opinion though, right? I'm not, I guess I'm more speaking more of, uh, you know, when you're a publicly traded company, you got to be careful about what you say, because you don't want people trading stock based on <laughs> sustainability saying, but you know, forward, -looking, forward looking statement, that's Matt McClellan's personal opinion. I'm sticking to it. Well, speaking about what you say, moving stocks, you know, uh, I don't, I've, uh, I didn't believe uh, Costco was going to raise the price of their hot dogs a dollar each either. So uh, we yeah. see, we saw how that what happened with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I follow this guy on um, LinkedIn. He's a driver for one of our competitors. It's um, about a 480 truck fleet called New Spam Transportation. You ever heard of them? Oh yeah. Clark Reed, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> Clark, Clark routinely gets about 9.8 MPG. That guy knows how to milk that truck for every molecule of fuel that it's worth. And he, I don't know how he works that magic, but he does. And uh, I heard him talking about the speed limit one day, and that's one way he's able to manage is he keeps that, he keeps that thing under 65. Back a couple of years ago when I was a driver for Schneider, we had a guy that he was getting 10 and 11 out of a truck and doing dedicated, doing dedicated. He was, a, if I'm not mistaken, a Walmart dedicated driver getting 10 and 11. Wow. 
Wow. I always, always getting the top fuel mile awards for the company. I can't remember the guy's name offhand, but was he we doing all, head, Was he pulling empty or was he running empty or what? <laughs> I don't know, but I were, I'm looking mine. I'm like, I'm struggling to get seven and a half, maybe eight. How's this guy getting 11 and we're getting bashed over the head by, by everybody saying, you guys got to do like him. And like, we're trying, boss. <laughs> it just won't go. <laughs> How about that? Oh, yeah. well, I mean, you know, what's funny is it, there's so many cool little gadgets and things out there that, you know, we can do to improve the MPG. But, you know, most of us are probably sitting around, what, 7 1 to 8 3, maybe. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've all kind of grabbed that low hanging fruit. And every once in a while, you get a freak of nature like Clark and some technology like electric APUs and things that, might be able to help out a little bit, but you know, by and large, I don't really see us ever breaking 10 unless somebody comes up with something really disruptive, you know? And I would not know either unless they like somebody goes crazy and re completely redesigns the engine of a truck and do something like that. I don't know how you would milk it out, but uh, between the weights we run, the roads, you know, you're doing great catching eight, eight and a half. Ooh, no kidding. No All kidding. Right. Well, um, we, yeah, we're, there's a lot of things to be excited about. Autonomous is something. There's one thing I also want to say about that before we move on is, um, you know, that's not coming anytime in the next 18 months. You know, they're running tests. All the providers, you know, Too Simple and Kodiak and Aurora and Torque and, Embark, you know, they're all running tests right now. Um, some of them are doing drive around in very limited, unique circumstances. But, you know, some people will tell you that they're going to be running 12 months from now. Others will tell you it's two years from now. Yeah. I'm guessing it's probably closer to the two, maybe even a little bit further. I, I'm guessing 2025, something in that time range when we start seeing larger scale deployments out west, you know, where the roads are open and, you know, you got more room to do projects like that yeah all right uh next question and i asked this to usa truck the other day when i interviewed them china is starting to come out of lockdown thank goodness uh, the supply chain is starting to squeak and grind and they're trying to restart how is covenant trying to position himself into getting ready for this influx of freight that's supposed to be coming we knew we do know that you know a lot of places like Walmart, Macy's, they're trying to go through their overstock that they have. You know the recent uh, reports coming out and uh, you know talking about stocks. The stocks for Walmart major retailers went down on the news that they're a little bit carrying a little extra weight on them. Uh, whenever this freight comes in from China, how's coming to getting themselves set up to kind of take advantage? You know or, or are we looking at some you know, positioning to be ready at the distribution centers or? Yeah. Well, you know, that's, it's, it's kind of a hard question for us to answer. Cause you know, I think you and I were talking prior to the show. We don't, we don't have a lot of business in the port cities right now. You know, we, that has not been an area where we've had a lot of concentration. A lot of our stuff is dedicated work. So we, we haul what, you know, our larger customers want us to haul. And when those things are ready, um, you know, the way we do our the way we do our fleet management everything we're kind of ready you know we're ready to be where they need us to be at the time they need us to be there we yeah. you know um it, it's interesting i don't know if china you know they've still got some crazy you know lockdowns and mask mandates and you know i think long, the port of long beach has sorted some of that stuff out but i was out there a couple of weeks ago at a conference called uh, act expo and I still saw plenty of ships yeah. out there in the harbor, you know, so I don't know if it's like 70 or hundred, like it was, but there's still ships out there because the longshoremen are still on strike or, or whatever. But, um, you know, I think we're probably, you know, we're, we're just moving the fleet around to make sure that it's in cities where there's demand. We've got, um, you know, like a lot of people, we're, we don't have a whole lot of, you know, excess right now, you know, we're staying pretty, we've had a great quarter, you know, we just had a great quarter and, yeah. you know, we have a good sort of outlook for the rest of the year. So I don't think that, I don't think that anything happening in China is really going to affect us one way or the other, just because 
we're, we're pretty busy now and whatever influx we're about to have is, you know, we'll be able to absorb it. Um, uh, we can't do more than what we got, right? Um, in, fact, in fact, speaking of which, I wish we didn't get, our, I don't think any of us got our full allocation of trucks for this year just because, you know, manufacturing and the OEM, yeah, you know, they've all cut us back. You know, we're, I don't know, 60% of what we asked for. I think uh, USX, they told me they're about the same. Um, a buddy of mine and a smaller carrier said they got 30% of what they asked for. So there's there's not enough trucks out there. Yeah, we actually just uh, did a story on about uh, the uptick in the truck theft, just basically to strip out certain components out of them, like the control, like the ECMs, you know, that are on national back order and wow. you know, starting to see a rise in of, of uh, you know, bootlegging parts. Wow. How about that? Well, it's, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a good time to be in freight. You know, I was talking to a bunch of young kids the other day. We're asking about, you know, they're about to get out of college and they were asking me about logistics. And I said, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of really interesting, fun things going on in freight. And it may not seem like it's a sexy sort of career path, but, you know, um, I love what I do. You know, a lot of young people on the brokerage side, a lot of young people kind of getting into, you know, entry level jobs in the industry. There's just, there's a lot going on. It's an exciting place to be. Well, you know that. Well, you get to see the cool of all the stuff, you know, being yeah. in the, the media side of things. All right, one last quick question. Everybody gets asked this question. Ten years down the road, where do you see yourself? <laughs> well, James, we're doing a video call, and I don't know you that well, yeah. but I can tell you're younger than I am. I'm 52. I ain't going to beat my much. <laughs> I, you know, I would love to be sitting on a beach in 10 years, right? I mean, <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. Right now, what I'm doing, sustainability and innovation, I feel like I've got the most fun job at the company. You know, it's funny because I was talking to one of our safety people the other day. She thinks she's got the most fun job at the company because she just loves safety. You know, just like Clark over at Newspawn loves to get his MPG, you know, mm -hmm. as high as possible. She likes to, you know, keep safety numbers down. That's just kind of what she lives for. For me, I love talking to all these startups, you know, going to conferences, networking with other people. Um, I wish I could show you that. Well, I can show you this right here. These two vials right here. So I'll describe it for your people that are listening. These are two vials that somebody sent me of regular petroleum based diesel. And this stuff is called renewable diesel. Renewable diesel has 60% less greenhouse gas emissions than petroleum diesel. It burns cleaner. It doesn't have DPF problems. There's no soot. This stuff is, is there's no downside to using it. And I have spent the last couple of months looking into this stuff and I just geek out on it. I love spending time looking at new technologies and we're going to start using this as much as we can, if we can find it. The problem is they don't make enough of it, but um, you know, there's so many fun things going on in this activity. I just, I hope to have my same job, you know, but I guess my fantasy job would be like my friend Craig Harper over at JB Hunt. You know, he's the chief sustainability officer. I guess they've got enough going on over there where they need a, a senior level, senior level <laughs> guy trying to manage all the things they got going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd love to have enough going on with sustainability to justify, you know, having an organization that size. I mean, they're doing a lot of really cool stuff over there. And, you know, he's a peer, a colleague, a friend, and a competitor. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I hope to be doing this 10 years from now if I can't make it work, but hit a recession. So who knows? <laughs> awesome. Well, Matt, thank you for your time, sir. And uh, where can people find you out on the internet, sir? Oh, man. Well, two ways. That's a good question. Personal and professional. And both of them are interesting. LinkedIn, Matt McClelland, M-C-L-E-L-L-A-N-D. Um, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. I post a lot of stuff about sustainability and, you know, the environment. Although I'm not a, I'm not kind of too far off the reservation. I'm what's called a, a you know, a pragmatic, you know, environmental guy. Uh, that might be interesting for us to talk about on other shows sometime. Um, if you got some availability in your schedule. Um, on the personal side, I'm on Instagram. 
I've got a night a 2017 Mercedes Sprinter adventure van that I've converted. It's a V6 three liter turbo. Yeah. That I've converted four wheel drive. I've converted that thing to do adventure travel. I drive it out west and Wyoming and Idaho and I do a lot of camping and outdoor stuff. And so on Instagram, it's Chad the Van. C-H-A-D-T-H-E-V-A-N, Chad the Van. And I post pictures from some of my adventure travel and some of the funner things that I'm doing outdoors. And it kind of, to kind of wrap it up, you know, one of the reasons I love sustainability is that the cleaner air we have, the cleaner water we have, you know, the bigger playground I've got, you know, for me to spend my time on weekends and holidays. And so um, you can follow me in one of those two places. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am James Bourne, a.k.a. The Rooster. That was Matt McClellan from Covenant, and I guess we will catch y'all down the road.